Greetings, everybody. This is going to be the continuation of the Tabernacle series. Uh, we are going to take a look at the gemstones in the Bible. Usually the first time a word appears in the Bible, in the King James, it usually gives you a reference to what the meaning or significance of it is. Well, so with that in mind, we're going to take a look at the gemstones of the Bible. So turn to the book of Exodus. We're going to look at the breastplate of the high priest, of which that was Aaron. Uh, Aaron was of the tribe of Levi. He was the brother of Moses. Moses was given the law, and Aaron was to be the high priest of the tribe of Levi. Now, in the uh, previous study I did on Scarlet, when it talked about uh, Judah having the two children, um, and they put the scarlet thread on the one's hand, uh, Judah was the tribe of the kings. That's where Christ came from. King David was of Judah. Solomon was of Judah. Christ was of Judah. And they were to be the tribe of the kings. Levi was the tribe of the priests. They were the ones that served the Lord in the tabernacle. I know, I'm sounding like a broken record. but uh, Alright, so let's go to Exodus chapter 28, verse 1. And take thou unto thee Aaron thy brother and his sons with him from among the children of Israel, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. So he was to minister or serve the Lord in the priest's office. Even Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and Eliezer, and Ithamar, Aaron's sons. And thou shalt make holy garments. No, not a garment with holes in it. Not, you know, that moths have eaten holes. No, no. Holy H-O-L-Y, holy garments for Aaron, thy brother, for glory and for beauty. And thou shalt speak unto all that are wise-hearted, whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom. Did you know that the Lord filled people with the spirit of wisdom to do the work of the tabernacle and the furniture and the clothing? Did you know that? Oh, yeah. Boy, you won't hear this preached in churches. Oh, but the Old Testament, that's just a book of law and, and wrath and judgment. Well, Genesis chapter 6 said, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And here's the Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom. What do you think that is? That's the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom, that they may make Aaron's garments to consecrate him, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. And these are the garments which they shall make. A breastplate. Well, that's what we're talking about here, the breastplate. And an ephod, and a robe, and a broidered coat, a miter, and a girdle. Now, what's a miter? It's a type of hat. And they shall make holy garments for Aaron thy brother and his sons, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. And they shall take gold and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen. And they shall make the ephod of gold, of blue and of purple, of scarlet and fine twisted linen, with cunning work. Cunning work. Um, I mean, somebody that's very knowledgeable and skillful. It shall have the two shoulder pieces thereof joined at the two edges thereof, so it shall be joined together. And the curious girdle of the ephod which is upon it shall be of the same, according to the work thereof, even of gold, of blue, and purple, and scarlet, and fine twined linen. And thou shalt take two onyx stones, O-N-Y-X, 
and grave on them the names of the children of Israel. So they're going to take two onyx stones. Six names on one, six names on the other. Right? Six of the names on one stone and the other six names of the rest on the other stone according to their birth. With the work of an engraver in stone, like the engravings of a signet, thou shalt engrave the two stones with the names of the children of Israel. Thou shalt make them to be set in ouches of gold. And thou shalt put the two stones upon the shoulders of the ephod of, uh, I'm sorry, four stones of memorial unto the children of Israel. And Aaron shall bear their names before the Lord upon his two shoulders for a memorial. Have you ever heard of the expression, oh, he's got the world on his shoulders? Well, Aaron's going to, in a figuratively way, is going to have the burden of Israel on his shoulders. And thou shalt make ouches of gold. I'm assuming that's pouches. And take two chains of pure gold at the end of wreath and work shall thou make them and fasten the wreath and chains to the ouches and thou shalt make the breastplate of judgment with cunning work after the work of the ephod thou shalt make it of gold of blue and of purple and of scarlet and of fine twined linen shalt thou make it four square it shall be being doubled a span shall be the length thereof and a span shall be the breadth thereof Four square. Uh, evidently, it sounds like it's uh, going to be almost like a perfect cube. Uh, the New Jerusalem is going to be a perfect cube. Now listen to this carefully. Verse 17. And thou shalt set it in settings of stones, even four rows of stones. The first row shall be a sardius, a topaz, and a carbuncle. This shall be the first row. And the second row shall be an emerald, a sapphire, and a diamond. And the third row, a ligure. I'd have to look that up. And a gate and an amethyst. Well, Webster's 1828 doesn't tell me what a ligure is just says a precious stone. Uh, all right, so a ligure, an agate, and an amethyst. Amethyst is purple, by the way. Emeralds are, oh, I forget. Uh, and the fourth row, a barrel, and an onyx, and a jasper. They shall be set in gold, in their enclosings and the stones shall be with the names of the children of Israel twelve according to their names like the engravings of a signet every one with his name shall be they shall they be every one with his name shall they be according to the twelve tribes and thou shalt make upon the breastplate chains at the ends of wreath and work of pure gold All right, so I think we got enough there. So let's keep going. All right, let's skip over to the book of Ezekiel. Chapter 28, verse 11. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. So is this talking about a human or another king? We'll find out in a minute. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardius, 
topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold, the workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. Created, not born. So who is this, the king of Tyrus, that was in Eden, had all these stone coverings, just like Aaron the priest that we just read, in the day that thou wast created? Verse 14. Thou art the anointed cherub. What's a cherub? It's an angel. He's the anointed, thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. Covereth what? Covered the Ark of the Covenant, people. I bet you the, the, there was two angels facing each other with their wings on the Ark of the Covenant. And I bet you, the way this reads, I think Satan was one of those two angels before he fell. What do you think? Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. What man has been upon the holy mountain of God? Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Can a man walk up and down on the stones of fire? No. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created, not born, the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. What's iniquity? Sin, evil, wickedness. Verse 16. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Well, what is it talking about here? The war in heaven, people. I think so. I think the war in heaven's past. Some people think it's future. You know, I don't think it's worth arguing over, but, you know, I think they're wrong. But, hey, I'm not the final authority. You know, whatever. Um, I don't know. You know, their, their opinion's just as valuable as mine. So, you know. All right, let's go to Revelation chapter 7 real quick. I'm sorry, Revelation chapter 12, verse 7. Revelation 12 and verse 7. And there was, was, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his, and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels. And prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. I've actually had people tell me the devil and Satan is two different beings. Eh, I don't think so. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Back to Ezekiel 28, verse 16. By the multitude of thy merchandise, thou, they have filled the midst of thee with violence. Yeah, a war in heaven, that would be violent. And thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. And there's some people that will tell you that Satan is a female because it says beauty. I, I don't think so. but um, And then they point to um, that statute of Baphomet, which has... Uh, breasts, you know, appreciable round breasts with the head of a goat and the legs of a goat, sort of kind of, I don't know. 
you know, everything Satan does is a corruption of what the Lord does. Everything. Uh, I guess if you listen, sort of reminds, I guess he was the first politician. What do you think? If I am elected God, I'll give everybody a chicken in every pot and a welfare check. Yeah. Uh, you know, you think about it. He was probably the first politician there. Okay. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. Remember, Satan's called an angel of light. That's in Paul's writing, by the way. We could take a look at that real quick. 2 Corinthians 11.14 and, no and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Ezekiel 28, verse 17. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thine traffic. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee. And I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. All they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt thou be any more. Wow. All right, let's read from Revelation 21. I guess we'll start at verse 10. Because I don't want to make this a huge, long study. We're going to do a lot of series. Well, once I get the foundation set for the uh, tabernacle, maybe I'll make a longer study. But I'm going to do a series of smaller studies, break them up into individual subjects instead of one long study. Verse 10, Revelation 21, verse 10. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, the holy Jerusalem descending out of heaven from God. See, the holy Jerusalem is the one coming from heaven, not the one over in the Middle East now. God does say some good things about Jerusalem, the earthly one, but... Uh, he also says a lot of bad things about it, too. Verse 11. Having the glory of God and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone clear as crystal. Verse 12. And had a wall, great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and the names written thereon which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. There is no thirteenth Gentile gate people. There isn't one. And I honestly, I believe Galatians 3.29, where it says, And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Who was Abraham? He was the grandfather of Jacob Israel, who became, who begat the 12 tribes. Uh, that's just, you know, and if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. I believe it. So, there is no 13th Gentile gate. And the word Gentile just means nation. Look it up. It means the same thing in the Hebrew or in the Greek. The word Gentile just means nation. Sometimes a heathen nation, sometimes that same word is translated for the nations of Israel. It wouldn't have sounded right if God would have said, uh, Abraham, I'm going to make you the father of many Gentiles. So they used nation. Or nations. I'm going to make you the father of many nations. 
but it's the same word as Gentiles that they translate. It's just, they just weren't consistent. Sometimes I think they, uh, the Lord does this to hide things from people so that the wicked won't understand. You know, you got to really dig. You want to understand this word? You got to dig. And um, I've used up a couple of shovels. I've worn them out, a couple of them. Um, not that I've got it all figured out. When I get it all figured out, I'll let you know. But until then, I ain't got it. And I had a wall great and high and had 12 gates and at the gates 12 angels and the names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. On the east, three gates. On the north, three gates. On the south, three gates. And on the west, three gates. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations and in them the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. And uh, no, I don't think Judah, Judas Iscariot is in there. But hey, that's just me. Verse 15, And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city, and the gates thereof, and the wall thereof. And the city lieth four square, and the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed, 12,000 furlongs. The length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. And he measured the wall thereof, a hundred and forty and four cubits, according to the measure of a man, that is, of the angel. A hundred and forty-four cubits. Isn't that funny? How many, um, uh, remember the hundred and forty-four thousand? Uh, you know, numbers have meanings in the Bible, too. Mm, there are certain numbers that pop up a lot. Some of them are good numbers, some of them are bad. 11 and 13 generally, and 6 are generally not good numbers. 1, 7, 10, 12, 24, and 40 generally, well, they're associated with godly things. So, verse 18. And the building of the wall of it was of jasper, and the city was pure gold like unto pure uh, clear glass. Now here's the punchline. Listen carefully. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third a chalcedony, the fourth an emerald. See, these are the same stones that were on the breastplate of the high priest Aaron. The fifth, sardonyx, the sixth, sardius, the seventh, chrysolite, the eighth, beryl, the ninth, a topaz, the tenth, a chrysophreus, chris, the eleventh, a jacinth, the twelfth, an amethyst. Sorry, I didn't take geology in college. Didn't do it. Took biology instead. Sorry. Verse 21. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Every several gate was of one pearl, and the street of the city was of pure gold, as it were, transparent glass. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. I know, I just read this last study, but hey. This is what we got to look forward to. If we are overcomers and endureth unto the end. Tell that to the pre-tribbers. Just remember, if you deny Christ before men, he will deny you before the Father and his angels. Jesus said, he that endureth unto the end shall be saved. So if they stick your head and your face into a guillotine and say, deny Christ or we cut your head off, keep that in mind, people. Keep that in mind. I heard John MacArthur say, well, you know, you can, you know, because of eternal security and once saved, always saved, you could deny Christ. You could take the mark of the beast and you're still going to be saved. But that's, uh, that's not what my Bible says. You know, if they're big money preachers and they're on television and they got big ministries, 
I wouldn't trust them. I don't trust them. I think they're devils, all of them. About the only one I really trusted on television was uh, Arnold Murray. He was about the only one. And I don't think he was right about everything. That doesn't mean I'm smarter than him just because I don't, you know, necessarily agree with everything. But I'll tell you what, I most everything he's, I agreed with most everything of that he would teach. He was one of the only ones that was on TV. And he was on like 5 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Yeah, I used to get up real early in the morning, getting ready to go to college, and boom, he'd be on. I'd be watching him while I'm getting dressed and getting ready and, you know, whatever. But uh, either that or I was up all night, I forget. I don't know. I had a crazy schedule in college. I was working two jobs, full-time one uh, job for 40 hours, and then the other job for uh, two days a week. And then I was going to college, too, well, half-time. You know, my only day off where I didn't have to do anything was Sunday. And that was my day to sleep late and study for Monday's class. Yeah. So, yeah. If they're on TV, they're frauds, generally. I don't know of any. So, all right, verse 22. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. John 8, 12, right? Jesus said, I am the light of the world? Oh, yeah. Verse 24, the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall not be no night there. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. And there shall in no wise enter in, into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever maketh abominations or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. And people, if you're, you know, if you, when you take a look, the Lamb's book of life, our name's can be blotted out of the book of life. You know, I wish somebody would tell that to the eternal security crowd, the once saved, always saved crowd. The Bible clearly says our names can be blotted out of the book of life. You know? Um, I don't know. Jesus said, he that endureth unto the end shall be, you know, let me let me quote let me quote that properly. All right, Matthew chapter 10 verse 22. 10:22. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Can it get any clearer than that John MacArthur? All right, and as a closing thing, Luke 12, verse 9. But he that denieth me, Jesus speaking here, but he that denieth me before men shall be denied before the angels of God. You want to hear the words, well done, thou faithful servant? Or do you want to hear, depart from me, ye that work iniquity, I never knew you. Think about that. Uh, you know, things are getting really serious. A lot of people don't know it. My regular, those that listen to me, um, they're pretty well, they know a lot of stuff. I, I like your comments. I really do. Um, well, except for the ones that says, uh, hot girls, 18, Enter here, you know, not those, but uh, I, I delete those and sp spam them. But, uh, but yeah, I learn a lot from uh, the comments. But the point is, they've got a thing called the Noahide Laws, N-O-A-H-I-D-E. I've also seen it spelled N-O-A-H-C-H-I-D-E. Uh, they're on the books on the United States. I think every president since Carter, from what I understand, every president but Carter has... Uh, signed off on them. They're on the books. They were in honor of Rabbi Menachem Schneerson, 
who they said was the Messiah. He died. They're still waiting for him to rise from the grave. Uh, he's going to have a tough time digging through that casket. But uh, maybe we should dig him up and put a, a wooden stake through his heart. What do you think? But, um, and I'm not really joking there. Uh, but uh, the Noahide laws, they sound pretty good to the average Joe when you read them. But what you don't realize is that nowhere in the Bible was Noah ever given any laws. Those laws only exist in the minds of a rabbi. And law number one says, Thou shalt not... Uh, Oh, I forget exactly how it goes, but basically it says you shall have just one God and not commit blasphemy or, or have an idol. And to a rabbi, guess what Jesus is? A false God. So you're in violation of that law. Every Christian is in violation of that law. Guess what the penalty is for violation of that law? The Noahide law, number one. Death. Guess what the method of execution is? Beheading. Oh, Chaplain Bob, you conspiracy theorists, that's, that's just a coincidence. Oh, really? Are you sure about that? Well, Revelation chapter 20, and verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them, and I saw the souls of them... I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. And that thousand years is just the introduction, people. So... Keep that in mind. Things are getting really, 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 really serious. And, um, you know, read Revelation chapter 12 and remember something. The woman is the church. And I know if you go to a, a Baptist ch church, they're going to tell you, well, you know, did you know that God is a polygamist? He's got two brides. He's got a Gentile bride and he's got a Jew bride. And he deals with them differently. But uh, the Bible doesn't teach that. There's only one bride. Paul said, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. And ye are all one in Christ. That's why I'm not a dispensa dispensationalist. You know what? Those people twist the Bible so bad. You know, it, it's horrible. They say, oh, well, we believe the King James Bible. But when they get done with it, may as well be using an NIV or Jehovah's Witness Bible. Or may as well use a, a Jewish Talmud that denies Christ altogether. You know, there's not two brides. There's one bride. You're either in Christ or you're not. Read Revelation 12. That's the secret of what is going to be the future of the church that is not caught up in Revelation 20 that are beheaded. Revelation chapter 12. And just remember, the woman is the bride, the church. I've had a lot of pre-dribbers say, well, I can't find the church after Revel uh, Revelation chapter 4. Well, that's because you're an idiot and you're not looking for her. You know? If somebody didn't show you the pre-trib rapture, you would never find it. You'd never know that there was a pre-trib rapture. You'd be like everybody else for the last basically 1800 years the greek orthodox church that has the bible in greek and that's what the bible was translated uh from was greek 
not Hebrew. New Testament was in Greek. Every word of it. Those people read the, the Bible in their own language, and guess what? They can't find the pre-trib rapture. They're like, what are you guys talking about? They think, they think the Western church is a bunch of heretics. And you know what? They're right. <laughs> they're, they're right. So, all right, well, uh, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Chaplain Bob Walker signing off.